Show that the equation y equals x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5x minus 3 has a root in the interval 0 comma 1. Okay, what does it mean to have a root? That means that it crosses the x-axis somewhere in that interval. And we have to show that it crosses the x-axis at least once. That's what it means to have a root. It could have more than one root, but if we want to show that it has at least one root, we have to show that it crosses the x-axis at least once. So for a problem like this, where you have to show that there's a root in an interval, something that you probably were going to want to try is something called the Intermediate Value Theorem. Now the Intermediate Value Theorem, usually abbreviated as IVT, is something that applies to continuous functions. So for example, let's suppose we have our y-axis and our x-axis, and we have some function that looks like this. Okay, and I'll call this f of x. Here's my x-axis, and here is my y-axis. So this function is continuous on this interval a and b. And if we know that the function starts out below the axis at a, and ends up above the axis at b, then somewhere in this interval it must have crossed the axis. And that's the basic idea behind the intermediate value theorem. If we have a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, and in this case if we know that the value of the function is positive on one end of the interval and negative on the other end of the interval, then it must have crossed the axis at least once. It might have crossed more than once, but it had to cross at least once to get from one side to the other. So let's look at a proof. So before I do a formal proof, let's try and figure out how this is going to work. So I have this equation here. Let's call this f of x. So I'm going to let f of x equal x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5x minus 3. Okay, and I have this interval 0 to 1. Now this is a polynomial, and polynomials are continuous everywhere. In particular, this polynomial is going to be continuous on this interval. In fact, it'll be continuous on the closed interval, 0, 1. So let's see what happens at the ends of the interval. In other words, what happens when we have f of 0? Well, that's going to be 0 to the fourth minus 2 times 0 cubed plus 5 times 0 minus 3. And that's going to be, well, it's going to be 0 minus 0 plus 0 minus 3. It's going to be minus 3. How about f of 1? That's 1 to the fourth minus 2 times 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 minus 3. And that's going to be 1 minus 2 plus 5 minus 3. And that is going to be, let's see here, we have minus 2 and minus 3 is minus 5 plus 5. Those cancel, we're left with 1. So it looks like, according to this, f of 0 is negative, and f of 1 is positive. So this is what we want, because this means that between 0 and 1, since this is a continuous function, it must have crossed the x-axis at least once. Okay, let's do a formal proof now. So we're going to start out by saying let f of x equal x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5x minus 3. And we're going to note that f is a polynomial, and since all polynomials are continuous everywhere, f is continuous on the interval negative infinity to positive infinity. That's all real numbers. But in particular, we're concerned with this interval 0 to 1, so we can say f is continuous on the closed interval 0, 1. Now we want to look at f of 0 and f of 1. So f of 0, as I showed before, is negative 3, and f of 1 is 1. This means that f of 0 is less than 0, and f of 1 is greater than 0. 
So by the intermediate value theorem, there must exist a number C, so we'll call the number, in the interval zero to one, such that the value of the function at C is zero. That's just another way of saying that the function must cross the axis at least once. So the equation y equals x to the fourth minus two x cubed plus five x minus three has at least one root in the interval zero to one. Now when you're writing a proof like this, you always wanna use complete sentences. And one other thing I just wanna remind you that we've shown that the equation has at least one root in the interval. There may be more than one root. Turns out in this case that on that interval there is only one root. But the intermediate value theorem can only tell you that there exists a root, not how many there are.